Welcome back to Watching the Throne on the Late Night Chat Network, episode 22. Hey, welcome back, everybody. <laughs> Jay was really cut off for me to do the intro on that one. <laughs> that was good, but I didn't. You, 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 I like. I just as soon as I seen that thing, it just went. Welcome back to watching the throw on the late night chat network, everybody. This is the Game of Thrones rewatch review show, where really I'm rewatching it for the first time, and Jay's actually watching it for the first time. So it's always an interesting conversation. And uh, we review episode by episode, give you a quick overview and review of uh, each Game of Thrones episode. And uh, yeah, we're chugging along here on the 22nd episode of this that we've done so far. And we are in season three, episode two today, Dark Wings, Dark Words. And just wanted to quickly mention, stay tuned, guys, because I think even uh, as soon as the very next episode or two passes, maybe episodes three and four of this season, we might actually be having our first guest on the show coming up and first of many actually we've got about four or five different people i think that we've uh we've been confirming with in talks with right now um for for episodes coming up within the next three seasons really at this point i think people have confirmed for so uh you know and i'm sure once we get to that point in time of recording we'll have people booked up for the next three right so uh so stay stay tuned and and you know these are going to be super fan uh guests honestly a lot of these folks that are kind of coming on the show uh, no, way more than me and Jay combined. I think at this point they've seen this, you know, the show many, many times. So they're going to be adding a lot to the conversation. So we're really looking forward to that. We might have to change their name to Me- Meister Stats there, uh, Jay, instead, because uh, that, that's I'm- that's yours, man. That's it. That's your name. <laughs> they, they can find their own name. We'll figure stuff out for them. Don't you worry. Shout out to Leslie Stats because I know she likes when we mention her on this show, even though she's not on- <laughs> the inspiration of Meister Stats. That's right. <laughs> But uh, but anyways, um, yeah, welcome back, everybody. Jay, what did you think of this episode? Episode two, I know the first one started off with a bang. was a great introduction to this season. What did you think of the follow-up here? More dialogue, more uh, more of a conversation, more interesting. The, the, the different things, that, and now I'm starting to notice more different things. Uh, more di- Sorry, it's other different people that... I'm, I'm gotta, I gotta get used to and and uh, different ways they're going and and maybe a little bit of changes and, and stuff to the story. Now, as I'm slowly seeing there's more. This was more of a a story based episode as, a, as opposed to a visual effects episode in a sense. You know what I mean? This was more of a you know I I I was trying to jot down stuff really fast for this one while I was trying to enjoy the actual watching of the episode. This is where sometimes it fucks with me because I hate having to push pause right. Yeah, and I agree. And sometimes you want to write down some of the juicy stuff that's going on, and you do have to do You want to write the whole sentence, right? Like, Take away from the experience of watching it. I know I get it. Like, you kind of got to go back and forth a bit. That's that's why, I mean, if we really had a lot of time, it, the, the best way, I think, of doing this would be to watch the episode, no notes, the first way through, and then watch it again and write down notes. But that would take, you know, a few hours to time. do all that, right? Yeah, exactly. So um you know i've taken that approach a couple of times but we don't we don't really have the time to do that constantly i feel like some 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 weeks right but um but yeah i agree with you in the sense that this episode was good because we really got to catch up with the other half of the characters we really didn't see in the first episode of season three which is which is good that they kind of split it up this way i'd rather them really do it this way and dedicate more time to the characters uh by by like in their own episode as opposed to kind of checking in with everybody in one episode well, because like as the seasons go on you're going to see that they start doing that more and more they're instead of just picking and choosing which storylines they want to focus on in each episode there's times where they try to touch on everybody's storyline in an episode and sometimes you get like two minutes with somebody you know what i mean and it's just like well, yeah, skip right over that and miss yeah it. i don't like that sometimes sometimes i'm like give me a juicier moment with this person like uh, well, this seems like half uh, these first two episodes are been ha- like you're saying, but half the half the the cast was on the first one, and then and the other half is on this one. I mean, you might see some characters still from the first one as well, but not as much as you did in the first one. 
the only person that's usually consistent in that sense is Tyrion. Like I find that yeah. Tyrion gets a good like five, ten minutes screen time like every episode. You know what I mean? At least, at least, right? Cool. So like I think I think uh uh, not everybody has that in that sense, I think, because even in this episode, he gets some screen time. Right. But I think um, everybody else that was in this episode, for the most part, we didn't really see in the first episode. So like, like Jamie and like, yeah. and, you know, it's not to say that those storylines aren't as interesting, um, but I think like as the show goes on, you'll find that there's certain storylines you'll you'll kind of attach yourself to that you enjoy more than others. Like you'll be like, oh, wow, I, I really need to see what's happening with these guys again. And then sometimes when you get a whole episode and they don't touch on a certain storyline or character, you're upset. You're like, Oh fuck. I wish they checked in with this person, this episode. And then you got to wait till the next one. Right. For luckily for us, because we're watching them when the shows have already been out, we don't actually have to worry about that, but you could literally just go and watch the next episode. But when it was on TV and that would happen some weeks, Jay, I got to tell you, it was, it was painful sometimes or you're just like, Oh fuck no Jamie this episode or something. You know what I mean? Like, and then you'd be like, oh, I got to wait till the next one, right? So like week to week, it was painful sometimes having to wait to kind of like revisit some shit that they went down like two episodes ago or something, right? So like... Well, that's what I mean. I, I, I even talked to my uh, to, to my dad about it because he's watched it, right? Obviously. Sure. And uh, I, I do I talk about a lot of television with him. So um, the the thing that, that I said, I said I couldn't, I, I wouldn't like to be that person that had to watch this series uh, episode by episode per week. Like there's episodes, there's certain shows now that I don't like to do that with. Yeah. Right. Cause I hate having to wait that week, but I don't really have to go anywhere to work and hear people talking about it. Cause some of the shows that I watch, not, you know, not too many people to watch, but this one, I feel like if, uh, and I think you've told me this before that it was one of those things that if you didn't see the episode on the Sunday that it came out, you didn't want to go to the fucking work or not go to work, but not talk to anybody at work yes. all day because they but were going to talk about it. But that's the thing that I kind of miss. Cause I told you that I did tell you that earlier on when we first mm. started talking about the doing these shows was I'm like, this was like one of those things they used to call like a water cooler show. Like one that everyone would yeah. come by, walk, come and talk about at work the next day. And, and that's kind of how it was sometimes if you didn't watch it the night before you had to plug your ears because there'd be people that want to have these conversations around you, or you'd have to like purposely avoid it or tell everyone to shut up around you because like, that's how it was, man. But that, but that kind of made it, like fun in a way because you got to experience it at the same pace as everybody else and, and be able to kind of pick it apart and be like, what do you think? What's going to happen here? Or what's going to happen there? And, and that's why doing the show has been fun for me to talk with you because you are experiencing it for the first time in that sense. But even for you, there's been some stuff I feel like has been spoiled, whether it's big things or small things because it's been around so long or things that you've seen that you're like, Oh, I've, I've seen that thing before. And now you kind of get the reference or whatever else. Right. So it's a little, it's a little different. I'm slowly now. starting to get like the gift references and stuff, right. but I still really don't. I know how you, you, in, in one of the chats we have that you said, Hey, stop with all those. Cause everybody's putting up gifts and then you're like, Oh yeah, but he hasn't gotten to that part. But if you don't say I haven't gotten to that part, then I wouldn't really know. And I wouldn't really focus on it so much, but then I tried to focus on it then afterwards. Well, the, one, the one in question that you're referring to, though doesn't yeah. really spoil anything except for the fact no. you've never seen these two characters together before yeah so that yeah. things That's, like that. that was something i thought so too I, it, see i didn't even get that until that part right now so i mean <laughs> So that's what I mean, though. But like, not that it really says anything other than somewhere down the road, you're going to know that these two characters are going to cross paths as a result of that gift. Right. So it's just things well, like that. Right. Like, so, I figure that much, but yeah. there's not many shows and there's not many people that I talk to about with certain things. That's why I, I, I don't know if I could do this when it would have been back in the day when everybody was watching it. Sure. But this was a cultural phenomenon is what I'm saying. Like, yeah. there, There's not many shows like that any, anymore because of the age of streaming that we live in. Now people will just let them stack up. Like this was like one of the last kind of like this Breaking Bad and probably Walking Dead, I think, were maybe some of the last shows that That's people true. would really kind of watch like appointment TV time watching and then talk about. I mean, fucking Walking Dead was so big on that. They literally had a show after the show that talked about the show, Walk Talking Dead, right? They did. I mean, that was a thing. And then that, and that, that, that became a thing. Any other show that came out, like Breaking Bad had one like that. And like after that, they were doing it for like a bunch of popular AMC shows for that matter and other shit, right? Like they'd be like, oh, yeah. you gotta stick around for the after the show show. For the after like, show show, yeah. Exactly. But then, but then as podcasts, <laughs> yeah, but then as podcasts and YouTube and everything else just became bigger and bigger, 
I yeah. think that's where more people started gravitating towards your coverage of this type of stuff because they well, I you're you're actually right by saying that because I usually I would talk to my old man about certain shows like like the Star Trek, let's say for instance, right? Or you know maybe even but he, because I can't I can't I have to ask him first. Did you watch it yet? Yeah. Right now, if he hasn't watched it, I gotta wait till he watches it because sometimes he likes to stockpile stuff and watch it on the weekend when he's home, right? Right, but now we have that option, right? Or the, or now there's Ducks. yeah, now there's certain streaming services where it's just like, uh, here's the whole season, right? Like, and they've started to do that less now. They've been starting to slow roll out that shit too because they want people to talk about it. They want people to do these type of shows where they're reviewing them. They want more of the public kind of be getting in on it in that sense. And I feel like we lost that at some point. I think some of it's starting to come back a little bit, but not, not to the degree, like when this was on the air on HBO back in the day, I'm sure. telling you, yeah, it not. So, so it's interesting in that sense. Right. But I think it's just now the way the world is, it's just the 24 hour news cycle. If you're not talking about it, when it comes out, you're fucking completely not even part of the conversation. And then you can literally just wait till like months down the road and somebody be like, Oh, you haven't seen that yet. You know what I mean? Like you'll even me, sometimes I'll get around to watching something. You'd be like, bro, I told you about that a year ago. Right. <laughs> you know, so like it's, yeah, yeah. There's so much. There's so much out there now, right? Back then, when it was just HBO, HBO was the place to go for shows like this. Now you got Apple. Now you got Amazon. Now you got fucking uh, whatever. Hey, you had just AMC and stuff, right? Right, so. right, right. So I mean, this was a time when HBO was was king because this is this is post Sopranos. This is post you know Oz and all that shit that was on there, right? Like a lot of those popular shows at that time for HBO. Now there's so much competition out there. Yeah, Anybody so, with the money has a studio now. Yeah, so there you go. So, anyways, let's get into it here. Uh, brand starts with brand uh, dreaming at the start, or again having visions uh, at the start of the episode. And in this one, he's running through the woods. You know, the three-eyed raven there passes by. He's getting trained by Rob and Theon and how to shoot an arrow. A boy. Well, they're, right. they're they're mocking him in a sense. They're not training him. Even in his dream, they're teasing him. Right? Yeah, and. A boy tells him, you know, you can't kill him. Uh, you can't kill him, you know. And he's like, why not? And he's talking about the raven. And he's like, because the raven is you. And he's referring to the three-eyed raven, right? And then he kind of yeah. wakes up from this dream or vision or that he's having or whatever. And and he's with Osha there. And they're still kind of, you know, now that they've left uh, Winterfell and on the run. And a lot of people thought they were dead, that they may have died in the fire and the wreckage. But, you know, we know that they hid and they kind of dipped after Theon got collected by his boys there. They didn't want to get killed in that battle. Yeah. Osha, Osha speaks to him when he wakes, you know, says they have to start moving. He says, you know, no one even knows we're alive. She says, who told you that? As we know, as viewers at the end of the last season, he overheard her having this conversation with Master Lewin as he was st sitting there dying um, prior to him getting killed, actually, sorry, um, about the fact that, um, you know, he kind of he kind of heard all this shit that kind of went down without his knowledge of it uh, previously. Right. Of what went down at Winterfeld. So, um, yeah, you know, she's trying to protect him, obviously. And, uh, you know, but, you know, he's he's kind of, you know, he's smart. He knows what's going on. So he knows what's going on. He's listening. He's got to he's got to do something. He can't walk. So he's got to listen. Yeah. <laughs> So our Lord, Lord Bolton interrupts Rob and his wife with news from uh, River Run and Winterfell. Rob, Is that a new guy, Rob, Rob Bolton. I uh, Lord, Lord Bolton, Bolton, Rob Bolton. Lord Bolton, I think, was around previously, but I don't know if they again referred to him in that. In that, he may be new. Actually, I don't know. Maybe yeah, you're right. I was writing it out because I, I don't remember, so I had to. I, I, that's why I put the subtitle on for this one because I wasn't 100 percent sure. So I, that's how I got his name. Some people were around, but they just didn't really. Maybe they didn't say his name or whoever at that time. I think they didn't bring up his name. So, I, I feel like. So he was first seen in in the episode Garden of Bones, which is in season two. So he was shown before. Yeah, he was. He was shown. But uh, but yeah, Lord Lord Roos Bolton was the lord of the of the Dreadfort and the head of House Bolton, the former ruling great house of the North after usurping the position from House Stark. So there you go. Uh, they they kind of yeah so it's, it's so they're important people clearly it says here so Lord Bolton he's the one that uh, from House Bolton there he he interrupts Rob and to kind of let them know of what they found at the wreckage of Winterfell there after Theon uh, they fucked it up and but he's uh, he's he's like cool with the Starks right the Bolton guy yeah right now they are oh, yeah, yeah they're working yeah, yeah. alongside them but you know Rob Rob you or know the North. Rob then tells his mother that 
uh, Bran and Rickon haven't been found when he heard back from Lord mm-hmm. Bolton about the fire and yeah, he's not sure, but he hopes they escaped or that Theon took them as hostages, but he hasn't heard from Theon either. So the mother's, mother's pretty worried right now, but what, what kind of occurred and what went down there. Right. And you know, no cell service. Yeah. Rob, Rob kind of got swept up in a lot of like, Rob's been very distracted by the his new wife there, as mentioned in this episode. It's true because first, oh, I mean, look at her, bro. Wouldn't you be distracted? Listen, I'm not saying she's not pretty. I'm just saying it's the man got swept up in the whole "I'm the king of the north" kind of thing, and then he won a small, you know, he won a little battle there against Tywin's uh, group there. Got a little bit of a uh, got laid. Then, and then yeah, and then he basically ended up having to run all the way back to Winterfell because he left that. <laughs> he let you know what he left uh, no one there right even though he's the king of the north yeah. <laughs> and he's off fighting another battle that you know he maybe doesn't have any right to, to in the first place right and, and that's what i mean i think he's kind of kind of lost to be honest there's some miscommunication in his head that's what i'm saying come on jay like there's some questionability of, of his direction uh, of his leadership right now let's well, say that's what happens with incest kind of thing you know it's not incest Brain- it's not <laughs> sex with. No, no. Well, who knows? The Starks could be related. The woman he met is not a Stark. No, no. I'm saying Rob himself. Oh, could have something wrong no, with him. If, no, you know, it could have been like a, you know, there's Tyrion. No, there's there's no, a little guy. No, no. It, there's no. There's no incest in the Starks. Get out of here. <laughs> I think you feel. I'm just picking at the Starks now. There's no uh, more Ned. <laughs> So then, uh, then we cut over to Theon. There, he wakes up with water thrown on him, and he's strapped. He's to, fucking having a rough time, eh? He's strapped up and naked against the board, like Jesus Christ himself. There, and he's naked. Well, on the wall. I thought about like the Jesus Christ thing, but he's on an X. So I'm wondering, like, where the what the fuck's? It's not even a cross. Like, it's There's more an of an X. There's an X Men comic where they did that to people. <laughs> it's an X on, on the cover. Maybe the guy read. Maybe, yeah. Whoever wrote the book here read the X Men <laughs> comics. Well, there George R. R. Martin, the author of the Game of Thrones, the books, actually did write some comics back in the day. <laughs> so there, there you go. go. Maybe you it's go. all connected, Jay. Uh, hold yeah, on. Two, look at that. My head thinks of everything, bro. It's it's all the incest in my family. <laughs> <laughs> uh, JT, I'm not sure if I'm right. That's what it should be. JT, not so sure. You guys. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Meister, not so sure. Meister, not so sure. That's me. Uh, there we go. This cover here. Yeah. <laughs> That's what kind of looks like he's on in a sort yeah. of sense. If yeah. You, if, I thought that scene was crazy. I was like, oh, what the fuck? Ah, poor guy, man. Yeah, well, Reen's nailed there. So he kind of... He, uh, you know, and then they're driving <laughs> knives into basically driving like bolts into his hand, like knives into yeah. his hand as he's kind of lot, you know, so he's not in a great predicament. This guy, of course, at the end of the last battle, we did see that he got knocked out by his own men and they said they were going back home. But now we find he finds himself locked up and strapped to the wall. So, uh, oh, yeah, because they didn't take him with them, did they? Did they leave him there? I think believe that's what ended up happening. They left him there after they knocked him out. I guess they, I thought they took them with him, but he must not have. So he's being held. I don't know. He was doing it for his sister. Yeah. Something yeah. about it. Yeah. I think his so sister's fucking around. It's mentioned later on that, but yeah. But so anyways. He so ripped his to... nail off in this first scene. That's what I thought was fucked up. Just like, uh, you know, I just, oh, uh, bro. I, I don't know. I, <laughs> that reminds me of surgery. Oof. So. They did that to me, but I was. Oh, frozen. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was frozen, bro. So. But then we're the, good. Uh, we we cut back there to that or back to check in on Jamie and Brienne of Tarth. Yeah, I get um, to see them finally they're, again. Yeah, they're continuing their journey as she's kind of keeping them prisoner, and uh, Jamie is starts to kind of really you know because he's been egging her on this whole kind of journey, right? He he starts questioning her allegiance to Lady Stark in this uh, in this scene, and you know basically mention you know he gets to the comes to the conclusion that he that she previously um, uh, served uh, Renly Baratheon. And uh, he kind of accuses her of fancying him a little bit, you know. He's like, "Oh, you liked it, didn't you?" Right? And she's like, "I did not." Like she's trying to like defend herself, and he's like, "No, nah, I'm pretty sure you had the hot hots for him," you know. <laughs> and then uh, 
Well, but he's playing. He's playing. He's playing stupid because he knows already that you know yeah, what's yeah, up yeah. with Renly. Yeah. Well, he says he's like, uh, I think you're you're far too much man for him, don't you think? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's like, uh, and, then he, and then he's like, ah, oh, no, I'm not. I'm just joking. You're you weren't really his type. That's what he says, right? That's yeah. kind of what he says, right. <laughs> Um, uh, you know, he says, you know, listen, I, I don't blame you guys. You, you don't get to choose who you love, right? You they can't blame yeah. you for that. Okay. And, uh, it's actually, it was a good line from him too. I was surprised. Okay. He's been, he's been trying to get under his skin, but he also says that too. And then, you know, it is. And then why he says that though. Right. I mean, cause he's a man who loves his sister. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it is, it is kind of <laughs> fucked up. It is really kind of fucked up to be honest. Is that me going? All that was the time? me. I'm that was me. Okay, I keep thinking it's me. I'm going. What am I doing, man? <laughs> um, you that know, that's where my favorite line comes up, though. Okay, go ahead. Let's... It's, just, it's, just, it's a shame, he says. But he goes, you don't get to, you know, you don't get to pick who you love. But he goes, it's a shame that the uh, the throne wasn't made out of cocks because they wouldn't have it. They would never got him off of it. <laughs> right. That's the way he probably kind of said that. You know, yeah, like, I know. Right. Yeah, I know he was gay. Right. So. <laughs> Uh, but then a passerby, you know, makes, you know, sees them and then he makes a joke that he wouldn't tangle with them if he, if he were to, you know, yeah. because he, because he basically, you know, uh, Jamie, of course, just, especially after their last encounter with somebody along this road, cause we know everyone gets in and now they're off the road. They're off the main road. Now they're like walking through like the, the side, like the, the forest area of they're like the, like, you know, on, they're on the grass. They're not on the main King's Road or whatever the fuck they call no, it. No, no, they're they're off they, somewhere taking the back too, roads. They caught too much attention in the last episode, uh, last season, right? When, but then you get this guy wandering in there just all right. of a sudden out of nowhere. Jamie makes a call. That's what I love about this show. They they, yeah. they come out of nowhere like fucking, you know. <laughs> Bro, they're just journey. They're just journeymen. They're just fucking like, what do you expect them to do? They're like going from one place to another, these guys, right? Like, I know, I know. And they, if they have to, they camp in the woods or whatever, blah, blah, right. blah. But, you know, it's just weird. And in the weirdest scenes, they just all of a sudden, there's a guy walking by with shit. <laughs> right. But then the passerby, you know, he chops it up with them for a little bit. He even throws a joke out there saying like, you know, what are you guys doing? He's like, well, listen, I wouldn't mess with you because he sees the size of red. He's like, so I think you guys will be fine. Don't worry about me. And then Jamie kind of doesn't trust this. He's like, I don't know. I think you should follow that guy. Like, he's like, I don't trust this whole situation. He's like, this guy's going to go and rat us out. Right. And she's like, he's just passing through the woods. Like, she's like, fucking leave this guy alone. James like, all right. Like, you know, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I knew it was going to be a great scene because it, 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 when, it, when it shows him just on the side of the fucking thing, taking a fucking piss coming up. Right. He's just, well, yeah, you're just watching that. Well, he you knows know? right away. He's like, he knows who I am. He's like, trust yeah. me. He knows that I, I, I'm Jamie Lannister. And she's like, yeah. No about it so <laughs> so then you know once again we kind of you know we visit your boy there joffrey as he's trying on yeah, my boy it's your boy i heard i i've always heard it was your boy okay so but yeah. it, you know no, we'll wait we'll make it our boy now okay our boy joffrey we were checking <laughs> on them wait till a couple of our guests that are coming on absolutely despise this fucking character wait till uh well, hey, don't I, worry i'll save that for them i think our first guest is, is you should hear her go on about it i'm gonna put my name as joffrey right here king joffrey right on the fucking instead of my name that day don't you worry yeah so he's 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 trying on wedding clothes with his mother uh cersei there and and he and he's yelling at the servants, no flowers. I said no flowers. I don't want no flowers on my uh on my uh my wedding uh, gear here, right? In my wedding clothes. <laughs> what kind of man wears flowers? What kind yeah. of yeah? <laughs> and so that or is king. When, sorry, this is when uh he she you know she asks what he thinks of her, or th what he thinks of Marjorie, right? And you know he 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 mentions you know the usual shit about you know it's a good match for their alliance with the Tyrells and everything else and it's it's a fitting marriage for me in that sense and and then you know but then she asks is like no but what do you really think of her like not about the politics of it all and this and that right and you know she's like yeah she's smart and caring and you know being a woman of the common people and you know Cersei, Cersei says you know she does all these things for a reason you got to think of it right and he, he he basically just tells her to shut up <laughs> he's just like he's just cocky he's still, yeah, he's just still okay. shut the fuck up right yeah basically man yeah, he's just shut the fuck up man so that's so talking. sad that's so bad eh? when you're like little son has to be a fucking the king you know he's you gotta he, he, listen i would be too about this woman she's a hot piece this one <laughs> Never mind. I, she is, bro. She is. She is. Yeah, I mean, I got to start putting her in the episode art. I don't think I've put her up on one of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so <laughs> she, 
uh, th then we go over to Shay. We visit with Shay, and uh, she warns Sansa of Littlefinger, and basically about the conversation that she had about uh, Lord Baelish there with uh, with his assistant. And uh, she says she thinks that she want he wants to have sex with her. And she says, you know, listen, if he tries to do uh, do anything or touch you, tell me, like, yeah, tell yeah. me, if he tries anything. And basically, you know, she says she'll protect her, right? And, then we get uh, a scene where Sansa goes walking in the uh, garden with Sir Loris, of course, Marjorie's brother, uh, Sir Loris Tyrell, uh, who accompanies her to Marjorie, and uh, and who then in in uh, turn, and you may if you have a chance, Jay, you may want to put up a picture of this new character. Um, she introduces her, yeah, she introduces her to her grandmother, Lady, is it Lady Alrana, Lady Alcan, Olena. Olena. Okay. See, I, I, o e o o l e n n a. Yeah, Olena Tyrell. Yeah, Lady Olena. Look at me. I got on my fucking game, bro. Yeah. No, good on I've you. Been like writing said, the names down, man. The names. I just fucking jot something. I think I hear down. I don't look at the. I should. I, yeah, there she is. Yeah, this is their meeting here. Yeah, that she's the one in the middle. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Who's a great character? She's another great character. That new one that we well, get to see here. I wanted to write her down too, obviously, because you know I don't know if she's gonna be coming through. Like I, I had to make sure I, I got her name properly because sometimes when they say it, you know the the accents got they have the accent so deep. Sometimes you don't even know what the fucking word is. Sometimes I, it's just too quick. It's so yeah. blended in. I mean, I watch it with subtitles, but like it's like you said, sometimes we don't sit there, we don't stop. To I, I can't catch up with the subtitles. I don't read that fast, right? Sometimes I don't. I hate how people do that. I don't know. You write, you read it with subtitles too, as well. Sometimes watch TV I try to get some of the names and stuff down, but then other times like this where I don't look at them, yeah. I just write down what I thought I heard, and sometimes I don't go back and fact check it. That's why, at least, as long as one of us gets yeah. it. And, we're oh, not, that's good because we're not calling the person the mountain for fucking ten episodes like I was with the pound. <laughs> I'm still reading while it switches scenes, you know. Like I'm still trying to catch up. Sometimes the fucking shit pops off the screen before I even get a chance to read the sentence, bro. I, you know. Um. But yeah, she's this. In, this character is interesting, this is right scary. off. Yeah. yeah, right off the bat, because you yeah. can tell she's an older woman. She comes from royalty. She just does not give a fuck. Like she's speaking her mind, this old lady. And it kind of speaks true to old people in general. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they don't yeah. no filter. Reminds you of grandparents and stuff. Like no that, filter. You know, like, this woman doesn't. Uh, yeah. She's like, you know, she just starts going off as soon as she meets her. And Sansa is kind of a little taken back by that because she's like, whoa, what's this? Oh, yeah. Going on about her, right. Because she's she literally introduces her to her grandmother and then she starts off by judging the whole fucking Baratheon family all of a sudden. And she's she's saying, oh, well, you know, she's like, oh, I'm sorry to hear about Renly. You know, obviously Marjorie's husband's death. It's like, oh, yeah, Renly Baratheon, you know, that whole situation. He was who is foolish to think he should have taken the throne anyways. What was he thinking? You know, she's basically just talking shit about him freely well she had a good one a eh, about him a eh, about him giving making kids yes. was it him that was making the kids that that she goes there once once uh once the cow's been milked there's no squirting the cream back <laughs> up in the others dude i caught that i thought i was misunderstanding it right when i, sh I first heard it so i went back to re-listen and i said oh my god that was a good one man yeah right because so, well, they're all kind of tiptoeing around the fact that he was gay right i mean obviously yeah this one that was a marriage or circumstance of her trying to become the queen and that's again basically what they're trying to mosey on in on this, in this situation too right i mean <laughs> that's kind of what they're doing but they are a powerful house they do have the second largest army compared to the lannisters and the kingdoms that seven kingdoms you mentioned that right so like hmm. uh you know what's you know what's freaking me out about with the tie and i hate to do this guys right in the middle of the, uh, this episode but quickly i'm gonna touch but the tyrells were mentioned even in the house of dragons like what i was sure. telling you Sure. Okay, but they were different. They didn't look like this. They didn't look just like white people. They had a darker skin. They had a, you know, they looked more Carib Southern, you know what I mean? In a sense, yeah. they had uh, dreadlocks. Some of them had it. In the, in the... So no. I know it was. No, those were Valerians. Were those ones the, the, the black yeah. guys? The black guy was Valerian. With the white hair? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. I, I maybe I misconfused it. Sorry. I, mean, I confused it, but I believe he was Valerian, if I'm not oh, mistaken. Oh. I, I'm well, well, if you want to look it up, look it up because I think I I I think I, I, it's throwing me off now. Yeah, I'm gonna have to end up looking up what we're talking, but yeah. Because that was I that was the big impression that show made on me is because Valerians are mentioned a lot in this show, but they're not really in Game of Thrones, like this main, but they weren't really shown a lot, I feel like, along the way. Or unless I'm wrong on that, because upon this rewatch, maybe I'll learn that 
there was more than I, because like, you know, there's been a lot of talk about Valerians over the least three seasons already, but I don't feel like we've we really had a lot of representation. Like some people are speaking Valerian, but I don't think we've, we've seen Valerians. Oh yeah. Quarrels, the sea snake, right? They were Valerian. That we were talking about. Black. Yeah. The, yeah. The one that was married into the, uh, the Targaryens, the yeah. sister. Was, the Targaryen. Yeah. 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 He was Valerian. Yeah, I mess up. I thought I heard the Tyrell. Maybe that's what threw me off with this one and that one. Maybe. I think the Tyrells were mentioned as well. In but this I, one, yeah. I think the Tyrells were mentioned in House of Dragon at the end. Remember when they went to the different houses at the end of the first season with the yeah. Stark? They went. They that was the first time they they mentioned like the Starks too, uh, yeah. because they were trying to go to their houses and see who was in allegiance to them. They, uh, to they them, yeah, yeah, that's right. The daughter, uh, yeah. that's uh, fucking the uncle. That that those ones uh, went around. <laughs> And, that's uh, where the that, show started dragging me in yeah but that's but that's house of dragon guys which yeah, yeah sorry guys it threw me off we'll actually be covering right in time before season two comes out and we already have people interested in joining us on that fucking show too all right so if you were chomping at the bit to come on these shows now i gotta tell you so oh this will be crazy man yeah, good, this is good. gonna be nuts anyways um you know so she starts off you know by judging them all and uh she says you know she says, you know, what 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 is what does Sansa think of all that? Like the shit that she says. She, she even references that. Oh, you're surprised that I'm saying that. you know, she's like, Don't worry, darling. Like we're here. We're, you, you don't have to worry what you say around us, right? She's trying to make her feel comfortable, right? And uh, you know, this is when she tells her, she's like, Yeah, listen, tell me the truth about this boy, this Joffrey. Yeah, about Joffrey, yeah. And uh, you know, she she's telling them to bring the nice lemon cake for them. And oh, all he's so that. nice, but he's so nice, and she's trying to be she she's trying to be you know sansa yeah. and, and and not and you know respect the king blah blah right. blah well, the grandmother's just like listen like uh we've heard troubling tales about this boy has <laughs> like has, you say troubling has, tales has you missed has he mistreated you and then like and then this is the grandmother and sansa looks all worried and she's like oh no he's wondering she starts like going into this like whole like written speech shit that she has right about him and uh and then and then marjorie like turns to her she's like no listen i I need to know like i'm about to marry him right like please just be honest with me, right like and and she like looks at her and so sansa kind of gets pressured into kind of being honest about it and she basically just like oh he's a monster right like she and then and then she even catches herself like as she starts to go on and she catches herself and she's like no no you know what no she didn't right but she goes off for a moment there right she admits like uh you know but she finally said, yeah, she did say he was a monster, bro. She, well, did, she, said, she did. That did come out of her mouth. Yeah, because Marjorie says, I'm about to be his wife. I need to know what that means, like, basically, around yeah. him, you know, because she's, she, she she lies and calls him brave and fair and other things, etc. And she's like, yes, yes, we all know about him in that sense. But what is he, like, you know, it, how is he going to be as a well, She says, right? Like, yeah, don't talk to me like, yeah, like, you cut off your you cut off your dad's head and, you know what I mean? Like, he's like, ahead. you tell me in front of you, and you tell me that he's not, he's a normal person. Well, she tells be honest with me. She does to go into detail about the story of how, yeah, she sent she he brought her to watch his dad's head on a spike, and even the the grandmother even says she throws that out there about how, oh yeah, you know they they fucking said your father was a traitor. It's like don't tell me like they're like they're not stupid. They're like we know like there's some shit that's gone on here. Like let's be honest, right? Like and she's like they, they kind of tell her don't be afraid. You can tell us. You I know, think the like, grandmother believes that that Stark isn't a traitor, and you know that Ned wasn't right. My well, grandmother, I think, in that sense, they there's 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 talks going on well, probably. The, the great line that Sansa says in this moment when they're trying to prod her for information, she's like, "Well, my father always told me to tell the truth," because she's like second guessing herself, like telling the truth about this, and and then she's like, "Yeah, and look where that got him." <laughs> That's what she said, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> so like, true, everyone's dude. Everyone's quick to mention that. And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, look what look what happened up there, right?" And, yeah it's just so true eh? And that's where she went off she's like no like joffrey did that that's his fault right so uh you know and you know he, he asked him you know to be merciful and he forced me to stare at his head and says that i'm a traitor my families are traitors and you know he's just a monster she says right and and uh i like and, to see what marjorie does with this but then she says uh you know please you know don't stop the wedding because of me what i've said here and, and, then, and then the grandmother's like oh don't worry the wedding will be proceeding don't worry don't you worry like we and and, and it almost it almost makes them have the more you know uh cards to play now knowing play now yeah you know what i mean like they're playing the game now too it seems like and trying to be smart about it about it right but for sure uh, yeah so 
Anyways, we cut back over to Rob, who's marching his way through the woods with his men uh, for a funeral for his grandfather. And, you know, this is the this is the scene where you start to see his men kind of doubt his leadership of what's going on currently. They're like, you know, what the fuck are we doing here? Right. Like, he has to go, and yeah, he has to now go to his uncle for more to ask for more men. And Lord Castor, you know, it, you know, is starts judging his decisions as of late as he's speaking to him as they're kind of walking through the woods here. And, you know, he says, you think what we've lost this war. And he's like, the day you married your wife, you lost this war. He basically like he made distracted. that woman. Yeah. yeah. He's distracted. He's got other shit going on. Right. And, and um, lost the fight ever since the day you met that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, you know, his wife's trying to, you know, tries to speak to his mother, Catelyn, during this moment. She's pretty cold to her at first, you know, in response. And, uh, and uh, but then she starts, you know, she starts basically sharing this the story with her about what ended up happening with Jon Snow that we've kind of heard a couple of times at this point about how she basically, uh, you know, treated him like shit because he was the bastard son and that is her husband came back from war with him and she didn't really want to. She got really him. deep here, right? Eh? But th there's a part of this story we never heard up till now, though. We knew this bit about how she yeah. didn't love him because of the about the fact bastard. That he was a bastard. But yeah, she gets really deep here, and she explains that he uh, he had uh, smallpox essentially and almost died. And uh, and Crazy, eh? smallpox back then when they didn't really have a cure for it, it was yeah, that was like an epidemic. Like it was like it, it wiped out like so many fucking people. Smallpox back then. Kids, yeah. kids, people, everything, man. Mostly kids, I think it was right. Oh yeah. Yeah, exactly. It was one of those things. If you got it as a kid, you would, it's like you know chicken pox. Like if you had, and you got it when you were young, you would you you. It's really, really it's bad. The fever and all that stuff that would have killed you back then. When you get older, it's really bad. Actually, it's the opposite of that. But it, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. yeah. But um, but yeah, it's one of those things. If you get it at a certain age, you almost want to get it because you don't want to get it later in life when your immune system's not as good. Like you kind of like right, like so. Don't we all get vaccines now. I think as a kid, when you're a kid for smallpox. I'm not going to get into vaccines here. Oh, no. I, 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 they, they didn't have any back then, though. Everyone's forgotten about <laughs> that. But we used to get those back then. But now it's, it's, uh, we all have choices now. Whether or not we should get yeah. Those who die of smallpox. That's it, bro. Just like Game of Thrones. Everybody. Yeah, we just need some biblical type diseases to come back. <laughs> kind of, I think that will change everyone's mind. Oh, the <laughs> the Black Plague. Yeah, you remember? Oh, the plague. Are you guys getting the plague shot? No, I don't believe in that. <laughs> See, this is what you're missing that. out on. You're missing out some great conversation on these shows, guys. We don't watch these days. Yeah, well, because you know it's so true. It's because it, it brings you to a time where something as simple as a fucking small or chicken pox or small box or whatever the fuck you had, right? Kills, kill them, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it would take you out, like really, or even just a high fever, man. Fuck. Yeah. So, anyways, like she said, she mentioned yeah. this moment. She wished death upon him in that moment because of how much she hated the situation. And basically, she prayed every night, bro. She just didn't wish. She prayed every night to yeah. the gods. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and then and then you know, he felt, he felt like the worst human being in the world when he actually yeah. almost died as a result yeah. of this. And that's when she basically prayed for him again and vowed to be a mother to him finally if he were to survive. And that's when she said, I failed and actually deliver. Like, I did not follow through with that, even though, and he's like, and he lived, but I never, never loved him after that. Like, she even says, like, I, I, in the moment, I felt like a piece of she shit. She just didn't pray anymore about that's it. That's right. And then she feels like she are being punished because of her wrongdoing in this situation all the way from back then. She feels like whatever's going it's on her with fault. her situation, that it's her fault right now. And, you know, and that's pretty crazy. Everything that's, from Ned to getting his head cut off to all this shit that's, that's karma. Going on. I mean, that's karma you know, is a bitch, bro. Right. It was back. Right. It happened back then too. Maybe that's why she was making some sort of dream catcher thing. Maybe it was to help ward off. That's what it looked like. Hey, eh? if yeah. you really yeah. sat and looked at it, it was like a sort of like a dream catcher sort well, of native she said thing. That. She's like, I've made many of these before, right? And and I think like being a woman in certain situations back then, they were only able to do certain things in times of war, right? So I think obviously they she only had certain to things to work with too. Obviously, she's got a little bit more sway now because her husband's dead, right? But I mean, like now sway she's kind now. of. Well, no, I'm just saying. In you terms have a husband and you got more sway now. Yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, here, I totally do, though. Yeah. And then, anyway, that. speaking of John, we we cut back to him and he's getting to know the wildlings some more. They end up sharing their knowledge with him and introduce him to a warg. A warg. And that's basically a man who can. Here, here, hold on. Hold on. I got one. I got yeah. a warg for you, bro. Yeah. Hold on. 
All right, buddy. No, this is uh, uh, John Snow's meeting some cool people. They speak like seven different languages in that in the mm -hmm. in their army there. The guy was saying so, but this is a warg, isn't this a warg? That's what we call a warg. Yes. So, so this further actually really helps explain what uh, 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 Bran is too, Bran Stark, because like, uh, if oh you, yeah, he can see through the the Raven. Right. So, so they really kind of are now finally getting into the explaining a little bit of. Oh wow! Did you not make that connection? No, not really. I mean, I get it because he could see, but he was sleeping when that was happening. This guy did it. He made his yeah, eyes roll back. To come normal. To <laughs> episode where we kind of meet another person that has the same abilities that this guy has. Oh, wow. So, so yeah. So basically you see with the wildlings, there's a guy that they have that can basically see through the eyes of a bird up above them or other things for that matter. Other animals. Yeah. They reference the fact that this guy can do that. That's what is, they're calling him a, a warg or warg or whatever. And, 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 and again, this is new to John what's happening here, but it seems like he's a little bit more aware of this, I guess, but they're kind of like, you know, his eyes are all white and turned back like the, the picture of JT said, and they basically yeah. snap him out of it in the moment. But then they ask where he was like, because he's apparently, a guy who scouts for the wildlings and is able to kind of warn them of things you know up ahead and and he was actually, he was actually watching through the eyes of the bird now so crazy man right so now if That's you think like of, star. if you think what uh uh brand's been doing yeah. he's just been experiencing that tapping into that aspect of himself through the visions and dreams that he's been having but in the same sense he is thinking of himself as the three-eyed raven there was that whole exchange that happens in that vision that he just had in the last episode. And then later in this episode, which we'll get to later on, he meets the kid that he saw in that vision in this episode. So like, and he uh, explains yeah. to him, that's more what he, his powers are. Bran is something different that we really haven't tapped into completely yet, but we're getting oh, to this know. This is going to be interesting. That fall yeah. maybe really fucked him up in his head, man. <laughs> we're, we're getting to yeah. see now, like, the, there's things like that that exist like this now. That There's people that literally have powers that can fucking put themselves into birds and shit like that, or other animals, and see through the eyes of them. Right now, we're, again, we're the world's expanding. The, the, the types of people that we're meeting now are you know, all kinds of different, like, abilities and shit like that it's it's really interesting what's going on right so it is no it is it is i didn't know you got me going now i didn't put those two i know I, I figured that he just seen it through his dreams but i i, I didn't figure that he would he but then i remember now i now i'm thinking okay. about it he's he's gone what through his wolf he's seen it through his wolf too okay what did he say that he saw in the bird he said i saw dead crows yeah, I remember that because that's where that's where the, that that that's where the crows were, where the Theon mm -hmm. had killed all the crows, or so, those guys over there, right? So Sam, yeah. So Sam continues walking with the Night's Watch, and uh, you know he's kind of traumatized by the whole White Walker experience that he had and how his friends left him when it happened, and he kind of gives them some shit, and then the commander yells at the, <laughs> yells at him. And basically forbids him to die. <laughs> He's just like, I'm sure forbidding. Dude, that was hardcore, right? I forbid you to die, and you gotta make sure he makes it, otherwise you die if he Man does. Up. Man up, the right? guy was the guy that was picking on him too. He made the actual bully fucking the bully guy that was awesome. oh yeah, two hundred yeah, yeah, piggy. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, man. I wanted to punch him myself, bro. Trust me. I, I didn't like that. I like Sam, oh, bro. I like Sam too. He's a he's so the innocent. Of, uh, of course, he's the heart of this shit right now. Uh, Bran wakes up from uh, Osha hunting for food with their dire wolf, and Bran sees the boy from his vision appear by them. His sister is sneaking up on Osha from behind with a knife, and this basically, is, this is they, cool scene. Yeah, they 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 confront him, and and uh, their name is Mira and Jojun Reed. Jojun, yeah, yeah, and uh, he says that they came to find him. Essentially, these people, and and again, you recognize the boy from the vision that we saw. Brand have in the in previously right uh, yeah that he had at the start of this episode so Arya uh, we we see her now and uh, we catch up with her a little bit with her and her friends explaining you know there she's explaining the whole three names agreement that she was granted previously and you know they're trying to make it to River Run with her with her help seems that they are lost and they hear singing and hide and then that's when an arrow is shot uh, at them and they're exposed like they basically seen these people they kind of call them out and said that they've seen them and Arya, you know jumps out and says to leave them be and you know i won't kill you and you know like how about the other <laughs> the other two guys are hiding and then they come out and 
Um, they call themselves the, brother, the Brotherhood Without Banners, or these group of people. Yeah, that's what I wrote down. Yeah, the Brotherhood Without Banners. And uh, they, so I guess that means they really have no allegiance, these guys. And, you know, they ask them to, you know, they basically say, they, you know, come talk to them, come with us or else. And basically his name playing. was Thoros, right? Thoros of Meyer or whatever. Yeah, good job. Yeah. Uh, and Tyrion finds, uh, we see, we catch up with him again here. He finds Shay in his room once again. He warns. Well, before that Tyrion thing, did you see when he shot, sh when that buddy shot the arrow straight up in the air? And he says, if you yeah. don't move in with it, it, that one was fucking cool, man. I'm sorry that I thought that scene was pretty neat just because he, if he didn't really move, he would have got it right in the top of the head, bro. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he, he called it, man. I'm like, fuck, I wish I could shoot a bow and arrow that fucking good. As we know, I can't throw an axe. Right. No, well, that's we do. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> Tyrion, you know, finds Shay in his room. He warns her of coming by there, you know, especially after that conversation he had with his father last episode. And she says that she came there to, you know, came to him because she needs help with a problem and that he mentioned if he ever needs help with anything, come to him. And he, yeah. she then, you know, starts telling him about Baelish and the and the redhead that he that he's quick to say. Fuck the rose, uh, yeah. You know, he's like, oh, you know who this woman? He's like, no, uh, you know, I know a lot of people or whatever. He's like, oh, you fucked her, didn't you? You know. <laughs> Uh, like, yes okay maybe i did maybe once well maybe twice <laughs> fucking you're, you're whores and you go what do you say he says i he says i i slept with you too or something like that and, then, <laughs> and uh she this turns it into their 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 what do you call it they're kicking this their foreplay yeah. right this yeah. is what this is right now <laughs> right it kind of works them up right and you know basically she says like uh she tells them about how she said not to trust uh <laughs> not to trust him and he's like you know listen you'd be stupid to trust that guy like Tyrion's like yeah you don't trust him that's right and Tyrion says you know that they can't protect her anymore he's like there's not much I can do he's like that she's not with us anymore like I'm not in a position of power and um you know <laughs> And then she mentions, you know, that he's like, well, you know, and she's very pretty. And she's like, oh, really? You, think she's you want her? You know, how, she's like, he'll, she'll have a lot of men interested in her, like he says, right? And, uh, you know, due to her beauty. And, uh, you yeah. know, basically, again, accuses him of wanting to bang her. And they kind of get it on there. <laughs> Dude, but, like, literally she's getting all like jealous and you know she's like you want to bang and he's like he can't even answer straight right like and you know i'm only thinking of poor little ned stark's daughter i don't think that i don't feel like they're the same age i feel like that would be like her uncle's age to bang her you know <laughs> what i mean so it kind of threw me off but then i would lead it to their kinkiness and later, sure enough isn't he just gets a blowjob yeah pretty much goes down on him and as he's as she's doing that he's really like, far down. like she's laying on the ground you think oh i mean listen he's gotta go down <laughs> Oh, this guy and uh and and also it's like <laughs> he's saying but he's like but don't ever come here again he's like oh again you don't ever come here again ah. <laughs> yeah 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 hey, he's yeah he's bitching as he's getting it he's enjoying it. it's uh, fucking awesome all man. right uh <laughs> so then we uh we go see marjorie who's visits visiting joffrey in his room and he, he called her there to see if she has everything she needs before he goes hunting. He's trying to hunting. Yeah, I was gonna say, oh my god! Oh, hey, I'm going hunting. Do you need anything? Like just trying to show off in front of her and and showing off his, uh, you know, his new crossbow. And um, you know, he he then goes and mentions how something that his mother mentioned him previously. He accuses her of being a you know a traitor previously with being re wed to Renly. Yeah, there you go. And She's hot there. No, sorry, dude. <laughs> just hot period and basically uh, uses her of uh you know of, of being wed to renly previously and basically says like yeah you know what's up with that you're a traitor and uh you know she's like listen you know asked him to be merciful and uh he forced her to you know uh oh sorry you're saying uh, about trying to wrong notes fuck i was do I, I flipped the wrong side over uh yeah she basically just said she did her duty as a wife in that situation right yeah uh, you know, only to how provide they, with children. Yeah, and how one day he got drunk and tried to do her from behind, and and, yeah. and she said it in a way that you can't get pregnant. When, that's like, right. that's, and then jo Joffrey wants to make it being punishable by death. And oh man, he well, went well, off sexuality. Yeah, because she says, wow. Like, yeah, because he she, she says that he's like he failed in doing this. Why? He's like, well, listen, I don't want to speak ill of the dead, but he's like, but I will. You know, if you ask. <laughs> and, I, and, uh, I like how you wrote that. 
Yeah, but like, I will. I don't. I don't believe Renly was interested in the company of women. He's like, I never wanted to try to have a child with her. And well, there was there was this one time he was drunk and wanted to, you know, basically butt fuck her, like you just said, right? And she's like, Yeah, no, that's but that's not a way you have children. I right? that is the way to have gay sex, though. So you know that I guess that's what he was he was trying to envision her as I guess, in that situation. But oh, Joffrey then, yeah, basically goes on to call him a degenerate. <laughs> <laughs> and wants to make uh, wants to be make they being punishable by death, which is something they're still trying to do. <laughs> oh, fuck, man, you know that's that, that's oh. <laughs> they, they they but they were they were really good about the way they touched on this topic. Sure. Okay? Sure. Very sure. very good, man. They were very very they're smart able, about it. They're able to comment Cause... on it from a perspective of now and back then, right? In that sense, right? In a made up world. Well, but they they very kept they kept it very light too, as well too, because you know back then they probably wouldn't have kept it that light. I like though how many ways they've referenced this guy being gay without actually saying he was gay. Like there's yeah. been about seven different ways they fucking have brought it up, dancing around the fucking fact that he's gay by by really just because obviously it's not something they were comfortable talking about and also not something that was very common for people to know of to be like yeah. I don't even think that word was for that back oh, then. That's what I mean. It was still meant happy back then. <laughs> Boy, right. So like you know it was not a it wasn't a thing. Yeah. It's just interesting how like they. They're all like, um, you know, not they're saying it, but not saying it at the same time in that sense, right? Very so, good. Yeah, exactly. In your windows, what is that's what you call them? In your windows, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. In your windows, yeah. Um, but yeah, then he shows off his crossbow to her, and they ha kind of have like a a moment where she seems turned on, or she's acting turned on by him in the crossbow, and he gets turned on because there she likes interested in the crossbow, and she has to go hunting with them. There's like a a weird like sexual kind of like uh perversion uh, going on here it seems like between both of them that they're sharing in this scene right i don't, I don't know what's going on like they yeah but uh, it looks like if during of kids doing it it doesn't look like if grown adults saying you know like i mean these they, they were kind of flirting in that sense you know yeah, poor I, joffrey probably had a boner underneath but I, there. I think she's trying to like fuck with them a little bit here you know what i mean like oh i i think she's sneaky this broad that's what i mean that's what i'm getting from this moment too and, yeah. uh, that's not without me reading into what i know that is to so pop. far no yeah i'm just trying to i am trying to just put myself in these scenes and a lot of the shit i don't remember so don't think I, everything i'm saying means something in that sense but uh we cut back to theon being tortured to see you know you know why he took winterfell they're torturing him to see you know what exactly went down which makes me think so these are rob's men in this scene and he basically said you know he did it to bring glory to home and his home and his father and i took it because i hated the starks or hold me as a prisoner and i wanted to hurt them and, they, and at that point, they're just like, okay, you know, we've heard enough. They put the bag over his head, and uh, they drive some screws into his feet. And, oh, my uh, God, bro. Yeah, that looks fucking But wasn't it with, like, a wench sort of thing? Like, like, what the fuck? Like yeah, it looks super painful, but it's drilling. Oh, into, wow. It's, like, drilling into the bone, into the wood that's outside of his other, uh, uh, yeah, his, uh, bottom of his foot. Right. Oh, yeah. God. So they're driving that into so he's not going nowhere because he's got this thing through his foot, obviously, and he's just yeah. gushing blood. And basically, when they leave the room and he's got the bag on, someone reveals himself. The guy who's like the guard. They, yeah, he's like cleaning up or something in the room. Yeah. And he, he reveals himself to have been sent by his sister. And he says he will return for him at, at, at night. That night, he'll come back for him and, and help him. And Theo's like, no, just get me out of here okay. now. Where are you going? Take the bag off. You know, he's just crying. I mean, like, he's been tortured for quite a bit here. So, okay. you know, But he leaves. We him. understand. Yeah. yeah. That's the last we see of that, but this episode. But. Bran, uh, you know, we cut uh, cut over to him who ends up speaking to his new friends, the two that he met there about his visions. And this is where he really learns a lot. And this is actually where he even he even uh, when the kid is telling him, explaining to him about his visions and how he was in his vision and how he like it works. He even uh, he even says it in this moment, Jay. He says, oh, am I this a, is where this is where he says, like, am I like a warg or whatever? He actually makes that reference. Well, I didn't hear him say warg. I just I thought he he, he was just making like some sort of if he if he basically was asking if he was special in that sense, like he is, but, he is. Well, the other guy is trying to explain how he, like what he is and like because he hasn't really honed his whatever he is or knows how to control whatever he's doing. Right. And. He basically, he says, he reminds him that they both saw the three-eyed raven together. Like, he's like, we both saw it. He's like, do you not remember? He's like, I was the one that was in that, your vision, right? Like, and yeah. then and then he, he questions whether or not he's a warg. He's like, no, it's not a warg. He's like, you're something else. Like, he basically says, like, 
it's like that, but it's not like that, what you're doing. Like, that's what he mentioned. So, like, well, you know, what's funny is because he sent that one kid off and he goes and, and that Jojen guy was a little worried and Jojen and he says, uh, don't worry, the wolf will take uh, the dire wolf will take care of him. Well, he, he says it's like and he a sends him off. He says it's it's difficult to kind of explain, he says to him, because it, it also represents future or past events, what you're doing. Like you're able to view future what's already happened or yeah, yeah what's not happened exactly so we're really learning finally what what the deal is with what's been going on with him now like we're getting a little bit by little bit but something's yeah. happening with in terms of his you know whatever he's, these visions have been right so um you know he also mentions that his father saved uh saved him uh during the rebellion um i guess like he that's his connection to his family like he's like your father ned saved us during the rebellion i guess uh he mentioned. and they asked him why he would help him right and he says some people will always need help doesn't mean they aren't worth helping right that was a good line that stood what? out to me there too it was yeah and uh, good one-liners in this oh yeah oh yeah great book great. slash story whatever you want to call it really well written and then our final couple of scenes here we have uh, aria and the gang dine with the brotherhood of no banners they they ask how they came to be where they are aria says she's been crazy trained to use a sword and he kind of proceeds to knock hers out of her hand actually they kind of both jump off uh, jump out of the chairs and they're kind of fooling around a little bit just to show off her skills yeah exactly <laughs> And uh, he says, hey, listen, anyways, uh, you know, no hard feelings. Eat up and be on your way. As promised, we'll let you guys go. Yeah. And he, his parting words to them get interrupted by them bringing someone in that Fuck. they captured along the road, Jay, who happens yeah. to be the hound. <laughs> uh, he just shows up and yeah. fucking the, the look on Arya's face. Who asks Thoro? Who asks Thoro? Says he, he. He's like Thoros. You know what the hell are you doing? What are the seven L's are you doing with the Stark bitch? <laughs> As he says, yeah. that, and, he, and he, unbeknownst to him, he's not aware that she's already a Stark. But the jig is up because fucking the Hound's big mouth, and he basically they mentioned how they captured him because he was drunk and passed out somewhere. They basically brought him in. <laughs> And he's kind of like, oh, what the fuck am I doing here? And he's all ham. Off his PTSD. Like, yeah, what the fuck are you doing? Literally, Arya's like trying to sneak behind him and leave. And he's like, what the fuck are you doing with that Stark bitch? And they're like, what <laughs> Stark bitch? So the jig is up. <laughs> the jig is up, guys. This guy like baited her seed out. The uh, hound. But then they end the scene like that. That scene. Yeah. 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 It's like, oh, then we're not going to see that more. More to come right. next episode, I'm sure. Anyways. And finally, Jamie and Brienne are, are, uh, Brienne are at a crossroads of sorts. Uh, literally. Either they go downstream or they be, exposed, the scene, yeah. they be exposed by crossing the bridge that they encounter. And uh, that's their path yeah, yeah. right now. And uh, Jamie continues to fuck with her as they cross the bridge. In, in Sticky fucker. Yeah, and in doing so, he gets close enough to steal one of her two swords from her side, cuts the rope that he has connected to them, and basically ends up sword fighting her. Like, they go toe-to-toe -to -toe finally in this scene. Like, Jamie makes a break, right, for it. And they have a great... <laughs> They have a great trade off these two. They but they don't land either of them land any blows with their sword as they have a sword fight. Of course, Jamie we know is a trained knight. He's an excellent swordsman as well. So right? she, yeah, yeah size difference. Great scene though. Great scene. This was like this was I really enjoyed rewatching this one. I was like this this is awesome right now. And yeah. uh and you know, listen, but you know, she ends up com coming out on top. You know, uh, another group ends up interrupting them but she, you know, right after she actually ends up taking him down. And, and of course, as Jamie predicted, the man who led them there was none other than the fucking guy that they saw in the woods previously in this episode. He did run to them and, and alerted them to the he fact run, that yeah. it was who that he saw out there and they paid him off for the information. And Jamie's just like, what the fuck? And like, and Brienne's like, oh, what the hell? <laughs> like, you know, and both of them are just like, oh man. And, uh, and uh listen the guy from the house of bolton it's the house of bolton, that's right like, lord uh, yeah. and, and jamie offers the money to let them go as he normally does because he's a lannister he's like listen whatever i'll pay you off just let us go let us be on their way even in this moment he's just like yeah leave her alone like she's taking me prisoner it's fine let's let, let us go and I, you know i'll make sure you get paid and uh and then they refuse and advance upon them looks like the they're they're taking them uh prisoner to the north isn't there though they said they're taking them to the the the, 
the king of the north, right? Uh, of course. I mean, that these are people. This is the Jamie who got away, right? I mean, he, of course, he's he's, he's uh, you know they've been trying to get a hold of this guy ever since he escaped, right? So. So there you have it, guys. What a fucking episode wow. again. A second and scene. of an episode in season three. Scene, yeah, that's the end of this one, guys. That's uh, a really, really great episode. The, really, the first two episodes of the season that we've talked about have been fantastic so far, right? So, Oh, they have been. I've been enjoying it so far. Like I said, this one, so much more stuff. I can't wait to see what's coming, man. So, because uh, it seems to be getting more and more interesting. Oh, absolutely. Different. So I believe... Uh, I don't want to speak too soon, but I think if you guys tune in for the next episode following this one, guys, and we've been continuing to drop these Thursdays weekly, uh, we will be having our first guest on the show to discuss season three, episode three, Walk of Punishment. Uh, looks like it's the name of the episode. So make sure to tune in for that. I believe we'll be having our first guest on the show who is uh, Christina, who actually her only one of her only appearances on late night chat was to discuss the finale of Game of Thrones way back when we originally watched it. And Jay had never seen the show at that point in time. So it was really just more me, Chris, me and Christina talking. About it. So really in the within the first 20 episodes of late night chat and we're on two, almost 220 episodes guys so think of it that way five years ago when game of thrones ended that's when she actually came on the show and discussed it at that time and she is returning wow. returning to the show to discuss game of thrones once again with us as we are re-watching it this time around jay's watching it for the first time so make sure to tune into that she is one of the super fans that i alluded to previously that will be coming on as a guest and uh, we're really happy to have her she's also lewis's wife who is a co-host of course on late night chat with us so that uh, we've, we've known each other for a long time and that'll be a really fun episode uh to discuss yeah it should be interesting it should be interesting i can't wait to watch it too looks uh, i just watched a little bit of a trailer there as i went through it, it looked uh Looks like a lot of stuff was happening. Yeah, it is, man, this season. I'm telling you, nonstop action this season. It's really a great one. So, so guys, make sure to tune in for that one. We'll be back uh, with episode three of season three next time with a guest uh, if everything goes to plan. And, uh, yeah, thanks again. Thank you guys always, man. Keep us watch, keep watching, and keep liking. <laughs> <laughs>